Harry Krishna, everyone. Welcome to this week's edition of the Harry Krishna's in Britain podcast. This is episode number 51. Uh, the Harry Krishna's in Britain podcast is brought to you by the Harry Krishna Project, uh, which is a national initiative uh, to try, and we do try as hard as we can, to share Krishna consciousness, the philosophy of the Bhagavad Gita with a new audience. Some people often ask me, Narada, who, are, who is that new audience? Who are those new people? Well, those are the possibly 67 million people in the UK have never heard of Krishna. Uh, and it's a it's a tall order. It's a massive challenge we've given ourselves at the Hare Krishna Project. Uh, we're keen to share Krishna consciousness with anyone who is willing to listen. Um, and we produce this podcast every week uh, and we appreciate everyone from actually around the world that tunes in either on Facebook or YouTube to to watch it or to listen to it. Um, I'm really pleased to welcome our guest this week, guest number 51. Uh, hi, Riddy. How are you? I'm good. Thank you, Nathan. Uh, should I call you Nathan or you Narada? You can call me Nathan or Narada. I don't mind. Okay. Uh, some people call me Na Narada. My mother calls me Nathan. They're both wonderful yeah. names. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yeah. Uh, I have, it's not like a two altered ego type thing. It's still the same <laughs> person. Um, yeah. So Harry Krishna, really, it's great to um, to see you. To have we, Harry Krishna. To have you as a guest. You mm -hmm. and I have been in contact for about eighteen months now. Uh, I think we first made contact around the autumn of twenty twenty one, which seems like a lifetime ago now. Yeah. Twenty twenty one. So let's maybe start by you telling us a bit about you and and your background and, and all that kind of thing. Sure. Um, yeah, so my name is Riddhi. Uh, I was studying journalism uh, in the UK, uh, doing my master's degree in journalism uh, at Goldsmiths University, uh, which I have completed now. Um, and now I work as a freelance journalist. Uh, I came into con I, I have been researching about, uh, you know, the child abuse story uh, within the ISKCON community for the past year uh you know actually more than that uh and uh, which is what brought me to you in fact uh because your podcast is how it all started for me uh i actually when i was uh you know so i've always been uh like i've always visited the iskon temple in london uh with my family uh and you know, my family has always been like a big, uh, you know, followers, followers of the ISKCON, uh, followers of ISKCON, uh, which is why uh, I was really interested in finding out more about uh, the community. And I wanted to actually start off with interviewing uh, people who, uh, especially Westerners, uh, who converted into Hinduism and, uh, you know, who have ado uh, adopted this as a way of life, uh, which was very, uh, for someone who was looking at it as an outsider, was kind of uh, strange for me uh, that, you know, people have renounced their way of life to adopt Hinduism, uh, which, which was kind of strange and beautiful in a way. Uh, yeah, so which is why I wanted to do a story about, uh, you know, uh, interviewing some of these people. Uh, but then um, when I went uh, on social media and I started looking for the Hare Krishna communities and people I could interview, uh, I, you know, I did find a lot of posts about uh, people sharing their experiences. And uh, and I came across a documentary, actually, that uh one of the members had made in the past. Uh, I went through that, and then uh, you know, one thing led to the one thing led to another. I then I came across your podcast series, uh, and I saw some of the interviews on it, uh, you know, by some of the members, and uh, it kind of opened my eye to the dark side of it, to the side that uh, people wouldn't know about if they didn't take like active, uh, you know, if they didn't look for it very actively. Um, and and I was very shocked, uh, you know, about the extent of this uh, that was being talked about and that was being discussed. Uh, and I thought, as a journalism student, uh, I thought this could be this could be a project that I could probably take on. Uh, yeah, so that's how it all started uh, for me. So that I find that quite interesting fascinating so you started off with a desire to maybe write a thesis or write an article on why white people or westerners were converting to hinduism and actually yeah. it's turned into a different uh, project looking at um child abuse or a kind of a dark cover-up of child abuse in iskon yeah um 
wow, that's quite a change, isn't it? From your original kind of intentions to a kind yeah. of new, new project. Um, um, and- yeah, definitely. And, and actually like it, I've, wanted to do a feature story especially on you know people who uh would sing the bhajans uh you know and i did find uh some members uh whom i was earlier very interested in interviewing because they were uh, you know it was they were, it was more on the musical side of it mm. uh as well uh and just kind of to get to know like what life is like for them uh you know after having uh, been converted into hinduism um so that's how it all started yeah sorry no, it's fine. I have to apologize at all. Um, I know we've got some questions to go through, but we we can go off topic if you know we can yeah. we can talk about other stuff. Um, so you you've taken this interest, which I think's um, wonderful. It should be applauded. Um, why I mean, you don't have to answer this question if you don't want to. Why particularly have you taken an interest in this this topic, this theme? Uh, why are you kind of why have you grabbed the button and why are you you know running with it? Yeah. Um, so, you know, I think it also has something to do with, uh, my own, uh, you know, my own roots. Uh, and while I'm not particularly a very religious person, I, uh, I have family members around me who, you know, believe in ISKCON and who believe in the Hare Krishna community. And, uh, they are, you know, a, a disclaimer here, they, uh, a, a lot of the, diaspora as you say is very grateful uh to iskon for the temples uh for the places of worship that they have provided uh you know to uh to people who follow mm-hmm. hinduism mm-hmm. outside of their own country uh you know so i think uh and and to be fair like a lot of people uh in iskon uh do a good you know uh, do the selfless job of serving their communities as well uh you know so while it has uh, this great side it also has uh you know it uh, it also has there is a there is a rot within which you know which needs to be addressed which needs to be looked into uh you know so uh and and child abuse is is kind of a story which not not just within the iskon community anywhere anywhere in the world uh you know would be would be wrong and would you know would need to be looked into um so as and as journalists mm. you know we try to tell the stories of people uh, who have been wronged, uh, who are suffering, uh, who are facing any kind of injustice anywhere in the world, uh, whether it is within ISKCON, whether it is within the Catholic community, any religion. So I don't, I wouldn't tie it specifically, uh, you know, with as an agenda to kind of go after uh, the community. Um, there is no such intent. I think the intent is just to report on the wrong wrongdoing anywhere in the world. Uh, and uh, this just happened to be something that came across, that I came across, uh, that, uh, you know, that I was quite keen to go into further because I'm a Hindu myself. And, you know, I am proud of my religion and proud of my traditions. Uh, and I know that ISKCON is representative of this beautiful culture uh, outside of outside of the country and I wouldn't uh, and it would just be uh, yeah it's just kind of unfortunate that uh, while it presents our culture beautifully there is also uh, you know there are also issues there are also problems that it takes with it Uh, Mm. so it is also important to talk about these issues Uh, yeah there's what I've kind of identified and seen probably over the last year or two is there's a, there's a misunderstanding amongst some devotees. They think, uh, you know, I, I get criticism for trying to shine a light on child abuse in ISKCON. And I'm not, I'm, I know other campaigners as well, particularly Sarasvati and, uh, uh, and others have, have, have had a lot of abuse uh, for speaking up against child abuse in ISKCON. Um, and it's not that we're anti-ISKCON at all. Exactly. Uh, it's actually that we're trying to reform from within. We're trying to make a difference. We're trying to change. I've got a number of fe- friends, for example, in the Church of England. They're not anti-Church of England. They're never less the Church of England. They're just campaigning against you know, bad things in the church of England because they, it's their church and they want to make it better. And exactly. I want, I, I want and my, my desire, my wish is to see lots of Westerners 
join or, or, or the Krishna consciousness movement, take up Krishna consciousness. For me personally, it's irrelevant which mat or sangha they're in, but to really take to take an interest in the Bhagavad Gita, the Bhagavatam, and chant Hare Krishna. I love chanting Hare Krishna. Yeah. You know, uh, I, I I wish I had the time to do it more, but you know, it's not about being anti iskon It's about campaigning against. Um, impure things and dark things and horrible things and um so so i completely agree with you um yes. over the last 18 months you've done quite a bit of research um um and in preparation for an article i think you've written um about child abuse in iskon are you able to tell us a bit about your research and what you've been doing over the last 18 months sure uh, firstly, though, I would like to, you know, just share that uh, as journalists, we are very objective and very impartial. Uh, you know, we don't uh, add or include our own opinions to it. Um, so this research is purely, uh, you know, from an outsider perspective of what the facts look like uh, and just looking purely at the facts, mm. uh, you know. Uh, so while I've been, uh, I've interviewed uh people, uh, you know, uh, who have been victimized uh, because of uh, child abuse, who have suffered, whose families have suffered because of child abuse uh, in the ISKCON community. Uh, I have interviewed some ex-CPO uh, officers uh, who have shared stories of, uh, you know, their uh, the cases that they have dealt with uh, in the past. Uh, and I've interviewed people who have been actively campaigning, uh, you know, uh, to bring this issue more out in the public, uh, you know, and very bravely doing that very bravely uh, and very actively. So, you know, so I've gathered these facts and I've gathered uh, from what I've gathered, it kind of, it gave me a sense that, you know, there is a culture of fear uh, about speaking out. There is a culture of intimidation uh, you know, and while I I actually really appreciate that, uh, you know, they have a CPO office and there are people uh, who are trained in child protection, uh, you know, working in, in some of these offices who are actually doing some good work, uh, mm -hmm. you know, um, so commendable. Um, but that is kind of the sense that I got from it. Uh, and you know, you would say that while uh, a lot of it has kind of improved from what it was many years ago, uh, more needs to be done, uh, you know, in terms of addressing this at its core. Uh, and uh, I believe, you know, once we have this research, uh, once we have, and and it is still kind of work, a work in progress, I would say, uh, because the more we go into it, the more facts we get, uh, we would then, you know, reach out to the management and get their uh, response to it because as uh, as journalists like i said like we have to be very objective and you know share both sides of the story um so yeah we would then i would then go uh, to the management and share their response uh, to it um so kind of that's 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 what i've been busy uh, you know doing and uh, i've been busy taking it to news publications getting them interested in the story uh you know uh which which kind of like has its own sort of uh life cycle um uh, you know and 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 its own set of challenges uh because obviously we have to be very sensitive uh, with a story like this uh you know not share any judgments not pass any judgments just collect all the facts and interview more people uh and then uh yeah and then just do an impartial job of reporting it so because you have identified this kind of culture of fear and, and intimidation in, in ISKCON, has it therefore been quite difficult to, to talk to devotees and get, and get interviews with them? Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, because there is, you know, uh, it's all very hush-hush. Uh, you know, people are kind of very conscious about uh, whom they are speaking to, what facts they are sharing. While some have been like very courageous in, uh, you know, sharing some very traumatic details of, of from their own personal experiences, uh, and you know, I have immense respect for them. Uh, there have been, yeah, there have been, it. It is. It has been quite difficult to, uh, you know, especially get to know 
more or interview uh, the, the child prote protection officers who have been serving currently, for example. Uh, it's not very easy to get access to them. And also, you know, we understand that this is, you know, it's not easy to talk about uh, the traumatic events that people would have gone through. Uh, so not everybody would be, you know, would want to go through the, all of that again and relive that in their memories. Um, so, so yeah, it has been quite difficult. People are also afraid of speaking out because they feel that, you know, uh, they don't want to face the consequences of what they, that could bring them. Uh, there's also this, this perception that what if they are actually maligning the community? Because at it's it was very interesting, especially with one interview that I had done. Um, they still had a lot of respect for the community. And because it brings them peace, it brings them, uh, you know, being in ISKCON and chanting the name of Krishna brings them peace and, you know, uh, uh, and, and solace. But at the same time, so, so they are kind of very respectful of the culture and the community. Uh, but they have also suffered, uh, you know, which is why they are afraid of uh, as also coming out because they don't want to, uh, you know, want any, want this to kind of implicate their community, uh, you know, want to malign, you know, what they have or, or to take away from what they have. Um, so I think that's also another reason probably that people are kind of shy of coming out. And yeah, and, and I've yeah. seen that a lot over the last two years. Uh, uh, certainly, for, I know from my experience, the work that I do, the, the campaign work I do, there's the most common criticisms is, uh, you know, why are you airing ISKCON's dirty laundry in public? Exactly. Uh, why are you, um, I don't know, harming the reputation of the organization in public? They seem to care more about the reputation of the of the institution than the victims of child abuse, uh, children and adults uh, that have been abused by others. And what's more, that they don't seem to, that worried about that. It's more about the reputation of the of the institution. And um, yeah, so I've certainly identified that. And, you know, some of the podcasts, I'm not going to say which podcast, some of you will work out which podcast I've done over the last two years that have been a bit more controversial. Yeah, I always get a bit of hate mail after that, and I'll probably get some hate mail after this, but I don't have any sleepless nights about it. Um, you know, I've, I'm incredibly thick skinned uh, and I don't like bullies. I was taught from a young age, just don't put up with bullies. You know, I get bullied. Um, I have had one death threat from someone in ISKCON, probably... It was as recent as two months ago. I've got that in writing uh, that people are after me, but I ha I've had no sleepless nights. They can find where I live, you know. Um, but I, I, you know, I. It's sad, really. It's 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 really sad. Um, yeah, I mean, you guys are very brave in that sense. Uh, you and some of the other people I know who campaign very actively against it, and you know, try to bring out bring it out. Uh, in terms of airing the dirty laundry in public, like. Um, we are just trying to look at the facts, uh, you know, and uh, I, and I just come here, uh, I just, I'm just looking at it as an outsider, you know, I haven't been, uh, you know, within the community. Um, so I just try to, yeah, I just try to look at it uh, objectively. Uh, but at the same time, I'm also very respectful of the community, uh, you know, because I know people uh, to whom ISKCON means a lot. Uh, and it's, it's a place of respite uh, for people outside of, you know, outside of India. Uh, and I do have respect for all the good work that they do in the community, uh, you know. So there is love and there is respect, which is why uh, it's important to also talk about what is, uh, you know, the rot within, like I said, uh, you know, so yeah, I think if instances like these continue, it takes away from what is what is good, you know, about the community. And I would just like that to be restored. And like you said, uh, you know, reformed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if 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 you're able to sh share any more on this, but you've been working a bit with the national media uh, or nas national media outlets over the last 18 months, How's that going? And, and in terms of the work of, you know, getting um, a story in the public domain, how, how's that all going? Yeah, actually, honestly, it hasn't been very easy. Uh, you know, while I started off uh, thinking that, uh, you know, the plan was to kind of uh, 
get a publication interested and uh, for them to kind of come on board uh, and help tell the story. Uh, mm. But it hasn't, uh, you know, there have been obstacles. Uh, yeah, I think majorly what happens is because uh, we haven't found or we haven't got to know too much about uh, the victims in the recent years. Mm. Uh, I think uh, that's kind of where the problem lies with a lot of public for a lot of publications that they do not. They believe that all of these problems were historical uh you know they do not uh still persist and and to be fair now it's gone uh does seem uh, a little lot more progressive than it probably was years ago you know with uh with the child protection office and uh you know th they seem to have been trying to streamline uh the problem but like uh so that's i think where a lot of publications have an issue uh because they mm -hmm. think that this is all in the past uh mm -hmm. yeah yeah okay okay um my next question you've we've kind of answered in the sense that uh why is in the question is why is uncovering is why is uncovering iscon's child abuse scandal so important and i think you've really highlighted that already through uh through what you've said in terms of you know uh putting a spotlight on the kind of dark you you, you came up with a very good so i work in pr you came up with a very good phrase about 20 minutes ago kind of the dark side or something like that and when yeah. i go back through this recording i shall pick it out but it was very good in terms of the dark side of iscon and um uh and just to emphasize to people listening and watching there's there's dark sides to everything in life exactly lots of, you know, there's lots of good people in every religious organization and there unfortunately are some bad apples as well you know um you know, a, a, an organization that's had a lot of criticism uh, on this issue is the, are the Jehovah's Witnesses uh, in terms of them dealing with it behind closed doors and not approaching kind of state authorities. But I have some really, believe it or not, I have some friends in the Jehovah's Witnesses and they're really nice people. My my youngest brother, his girlfriend, her family are Jehovah's Witnesses. For some bizarre reason, they allow her to date my brother, but I don't know why. But yeah. and, they're, and they're really nice people. Whenever I see yeah. them, they give me a hug and ask me how I am like any of you you know like most human beings do yeah uh, if, if they want to hug me but <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah um, which is which is very true because I know people who go to Iskon temple like every week uh you know uh some of my own family members and every important occasion every important festival they have to go to uh the Iskon temple and seek the blessings of uh, you know, the, the pundits and, uh, you know, and it does provide a space for, uh, you know, people to celebrate the festivals and carry out the religious rituals that they need to. So it is definitely, you know, there is a lot of good to it. Uh, mm. You know, there is, a, there is a good side, definitely, like you said, uh, you know, I, I know people who have done donations to ISKCON, uh, you know, back in India as well. Uh, so there is, you know, there is a lot of that. There is a lot of faith as well. What we're trying to just do is to make people more accountable, make the management more accountable mm -hmm. and say that, hey, uh, we know that, you know, what you do is is kind of not, uh, good and important. Uh, but you also please address this this rot that has been, you know, mm -hmm. that people that is driving people away and sort of making people lose their faith in this community uh which is not what you would want uh you know mm. this is a place of worship this yeah. is a place where people you know want to go with the belief that uh they will be safe but uh if you know if that is not being uh, addressed then that be mm. this it's just going to grow as you know a problem yeah yeah and 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 just to really highlight two examples of really positive things that is gone has done recently in terms of this issue of child abuse. Of course, there's that, I keep forgetting what his other name is, but Bhaktivid Japurna, he was Bhaktivid Japurna. He's now been reverted. He has been reverted by others back to his previous name, uh, which I keep forgetting what it is, uh, partly because I'm not really interested. Uh, but he has now had a lifetime ban. He's been stripped of his sannyas hood, uh, sannyas position, and he's been given, a, I think, I, I hope it's a lifetime ban against uh, uh, being a sannyasi ever again and he's been you know after 40 years of abusing children in ISKCON it's quite unbelievable that it's taken 40 years to bring this against him but that's a really good thing and I know the ISKCON community the Gaudiya Vaishnav community is really happy about that and of course the other thing is is Lokanath uh, um, you know I'm not I refuse to use the term Swami when talking about him but Lokanath has been banned now uh, in 
from North America and from Europe, from coming and preaching and doing kirtans and basically having a position of authority in ISKCON in, in basically the large you know, a large part of the Western world, which is very good. And people are happy about that. Uh, it's gone is a bit slow. You know, it's a charity. It has charitable status. It it takes a long time to do things uh, and it needs to, as well as deal with these issues of child abuse, it also needs to sort out its systems in terms of how do we, how are we more pro, um, proactive in dealing with these things? Um, you know, so there are also some good, some good things that, um, you know that that the iskon is is doing yeah um, it's good to know uh, you know definitely that there is this uh, awareness and i give a lot of credit uh, you know for uh, bringing up uh, you know by, uh, by a lot of people who are actively campaigning uh, to kind of raise this uh, raise more awareness towards this issue and uh, i think it is because people have now been and there's social media now you know you cannot keep uh, uh, stories like these hidden uh, anymore uh, more and more people will come out and speak about it it, uh, you know, with uh, through social media, if not anything else, uh, you know. So I think because of that, there has been a growing sense of awareness, yeah, uh, towards uh, everything that's been happening. Uh, and I think uh, once because of that, I think there there would still be, uh, you know, some change. Uh, at least it does put, uh, you know, a little pressure on the management to kind of address it. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, definitely. And that that's one of the big differences between now 2023 and, yeah. you know, 1993 exactly. is that in 1993, the ISKCON leadership could maybe do an investigation into someone who had been accused of child abuse, uh, yeah. might find them guilty or not guilty, but they don't tell anybody. Yeah. Um, uh, and, and you just can't do that these days with social media and with a um with them it's much easier to communicate around the world you know yeah. with, with with devotees and that's why it's gone globally has been unable unable to keep things secrets these days because yeah. uh because social media is, is, is such an easy way to communicate in fact uh mm. in this whole podcast i haven't revealed at all where you are in the world right now uh and that's partly to protect your own um privacy you know speaking on this topic today but also um, yeah, we haven't revealed where you are, and that's. Um, I'm, but we don't need to <laughs> because we're we're having this conversation now via Zoom. Um, yeah, ready, ready for social media platforms. Um, so that's that's um really good. Um, mm -hmm. is there anything else? What's been great about this interview? We've been quite succinct, and we've kind of got to stuff really quickly. And uh, um, with other guests, we go off on these big tangents and things. Um, is there anything yeah. particularly else you want to say on this on this topic? Yeah, I would just say that, uh, you know, uh, while a lot of interviews that I have done uh, uh, have been, you know, have been quite sufficient to kind of paint a pinch picture of, of the wrongdoings, there is still uh, a lot of work that needs to be done. Uh, and uh, I would just kind of, yeah, wait for that to happen, uh, you know, before, uh, and, and I don't come as, you know, as journalists, we are not here to pass any statement or, or, you know, to pass any judgment uh, on, uh, on, on the, on, you know, the issue. We just report it, uh, basis the facts that we gather, uh, you know. Um, so I think uh, more of that work needs to be done. Uh, and uh, it would just be, yeah, it would just help, uh, you know, if people were willing to kind of speak up uh, a little more. Uh, so you'd be and, you'd be keen and willing to hear from more people. Would you be? I would be. Yeah, I would be. But also at the same time, uh, you know, just insisting that, uh, yeah, it people come to us with authentic stories of, uh, you know, their experiences. Uh, yeah, the intent is not, as I said, to malign the community, uh, you know, to speak bad about anyone, to speak bad about, uh, you know, to kind of, uh, it, it is just all about making uh, making the management more accountable and just starting a conversation, uh, really, while, you know, a lot of this is already now out in the public, uh, to just continue on that uh, conversation and uh, ask questions uh, about what is being done. Uh, to address this, uh, you know, so it is just about asking these questions uh, and not necessarily going against uh, the organization with any uh, hidden agenda or any in any any other malified intentions. 
the intent is just to make the community safer for everyone, uh, you know, so that uh, people can still continue uh, finding peace, uh, you know, within the community um, and not kind of be afraid or not be threatened, uh, you know. So I think, uh, yeah, I think it will still help if more people mm. would kind of talk. Uh, so anyone, anyone watching or listening to this podcast who would like to talk to you uh i think the best way forward would be for them to send a message to me um and and because uh, i don't want i don't want to give your contact details out over air uh yeah. on air for obvious reasons yeah they could kind of message you or uh, uh we can yeah, try and you know uh, yeah. uh, uh, try and we need to we need to we need to discuss how we do that but in in principle people can can contact the harry krishna project contact me and then i can pass them on to you or i can give you their details i mean yeah. we have to work out how we do it because i want to yeah. protect your privacy and your objectivity as well without yeah. um you know pests people that are are uh, uh, uh contacting you for different reasons uh exactly. you know and i find that when you put your contact details online uh, people contact you about nonsense uh but people yeah. on on a on a serious level, people that yeah. do want to do, have do do want to share their story um, have been the victim of child abuse or other abuse in ISKCON and would love to talk to Riddy. She would she would love to talk to you. So yeah. we need to work on how we do that. So yeah, um, okay. yeah. yeah. At the same time, <clears throat> also I would add that uh, you know uh, because I had done a lot of interviews in the past, I know how difficult it can be for people to you know share uh in uh, details of you know traumatic events like that uh i would say yeah I, while i'm happy you know for them to get in touch with me uh i am a freelance journalist so the best that i can do is take them you know take these stories to publications uh but it would be wrong for me to say that i'm making any promise Mm. Uh, you know, of this uh, going out on, you know, BBC or any specific channels like that. Um, so, you know, I want people to understand that, uh, you know, that attempt is always to kind of take it to publications. Uh, but it is not something that is in the, under my control, uh, you know. Um, so that needs to be kept in mind. Yeah, because yeah. I don't want to take someone's time and then feel like I have betrayed them you know yeah yeah i i i get that uh, and i yeah. i agree with that completely certainly yeah. over the last 6 months uh since this podcast and and since the harry christian project had more of a global viewing or, or global reach i've had quite a lot of devotees contact me asking me for advice and help on on lots of issues and i i can't always respond to them all or i can't help with them all and people just sometimes have general questions and mm -hmm. they just want to know uh i hope he's not listening if he if he is listening here hopefully he won't mind too much but one person contacted me uh earlier last week uh to ask for a, a um my own personal private views on the ritvik order which is a philosophical view within the Hare krishna movement he said oh narada you're very clever at not telling saying what your view is on that particular issue even though you've done podcasts on it because i've tried to be objective and the end, of, in the end, we had a two-hour WhatsApp conversation about about some thoughts around the Ritvik order and how it works, as an example. And one thing he particularly said was he has that using ISKCON as an example. He has a fear of asking some questions in ISKCON because he gets accused of offending somebody's guru or speaking out of line or not following the party line. And certainly, what I've tried to do over the last year is just create a safe space. For devotees to ask any question they want even as crazy as it sounds ask the question you yeah. know we're living well i'm living this is a democracy you can ask any question you want you can have an, you can have any view you want it's crazy as it might sound you're yeah. you know and that's what what i encourage but i i get it you know people they want help and they want support with so many um different issues and and just one i'm going to allude to because it 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 might blow up i'm giving everyone a bit of a preview you now over the next few weeks one person has contacted me just three days ago um, about abuse she has received at one currently received at one of the ISKCON temples in the UK. And she has shown me and played to me audio recordings of people admitting to doing bad things. And she's currently meeting with lawyers. And if that gets out, which it should, 
you know, that's a big, big story. And so, you know, it's important that there's that safe space for people to ask questions as, uh, um, um, as well. I yeah. rabbited on a bit then, because uh, we got through our questions quicker than I thought we did. <laughs> we would. Yeah, yeah. No, that is, uh, you know, yeah, that is sort of good to know that, you know, someone has approached a lawyer and they are seeking legal help uh, to help them with it. Uh, I think that's the right way to do it as well, uh, you know, to go to, uh, you know, to speak to um, authorities uh, who could who could actually help with that. Uh, yeah. OK, um, Riddhi, we've been chatting for a while now. It's been it's been fantastic to chat with you properly on this in this kind of podcast platform. Um, and I really appreciate it because I know it took some persuasion to get you to come as a guest. <laughs> um, yeah, because I didn't want to come across as someone who <laughs> is this, you know, threat or a danger or anything, because I just come, uh, you know, with the intent of doing some good work, uh, you know, and I think eventually this is going to benefit the community. This is actually in the interest of the community rather than again, being against it, mm. uh, you know, because, uh, yeah, if, yeah, if this is not addressed uh, at the right time, this could have larger implications, uh, you know. So I think it's time for, uh, you know, people to have an honest conversation about this um, so that this could kind of be, you know, be be sorted. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. OK, well, Riddy, I'm just going to, I think, say goodbye to everybody watching or listening at home or wherever they are. These days you can watch and view things on your phone, on a bus, on a train, yeah. uh, uh even on an aeroplane, I'm sure. Uh, <laughs> um, so a big thank you to you, Riddy, for being guest number 51 uh, on, on the on the Harry Christmas in Britain podcast. Thank you for coming on. It's been great to see you this week. Thank you so much for reaching out, Nathan. Uh, 51 is kind of like a, you know, auspicious number <laughs> in Hindu community. Yeah, yeah, it is. You know, when we go to weddings, we give like 51 rupees. Uh, so it's always considered... <laughs> <laughs> sort of like an auspicious number yeah yeah so this is an auspicious podcast uh, <laughs> which uh, it's been, and so it's been really nice to have you as the guest so thank you everyone for tuning in to this week's edition of the harry christians in britain podcast which is brought to you by the harry krishna project if you're watching this on facebook or youtube please do like it love it or care for it please do put a positive comment and please do share the link with uh, friends and family and anyone who's interested um and uh i have a, a list of guests lined up over the next few weeks but if you'd like to be a guest on the harry christians in britain podcast uh i'm certainly willing to hear from you uh everyone has a voice or should have a voice uh, and everyone has a story to tell uh, until next week thank you and thank hari you. krishna hari krishna take care